the one person that's holding all the power over you, that's causing you to not get the results that you want in life. It's not the government, it's not your best friend, it's not your wife, husband, spouse, mom, dad, brother, sister, it's not the cat, it's not the dog, it's none of those things. So there's one person to blame, and this one person is stopping you from getting the results that you want in your life, it's stopping you from getting the sales that you want with your business, having the relationship that you wanna have, getting in shape, whatever the transformation is, that you're looking to achieve. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a simple framework that I use to strip this person of all of their power so that you can actually live the life that you wanna live. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ron Carter. I've used this framework myself, not only to collect over 220,000 in revenue over the last couple of years, but actually before that, go from being a homeless drug addict on the street to obviously a housed person with a decent life. So I'm gonna be sharing some hard truths in this video. So if you're not ready for that, you can just go watch something else right now. And so the first, the one person that's holding all the power over you, that's causing you to not get the results that you want in life, it's not the government, it's not your best friend, it's not your wife, husband, spouse, mom, dad, brother, sister, it's not the cat, it's not the dog, it's none of those things. So the one person that's actually holding you back is you. It's you. So let me share a couple different things to help really paint this picture. When I was on the street, when I was on drugs, I used to blame everything for my circumstances. I used to say, you know what? People would be like, hey, why don't you like just get a job or why don't you just like stop like getting loaded and getting high? And I would say, if you knew what I was experiencing and what I was feeling, you would do the same thing that I'm doing. And I'm saying, it's, it's too hard, I can't because of this, or I can't because of that. I can't go get a job because I don't, I'm not clean, or I don't have a cell phone, and no one's gonna hire me. And I had all these excuses, and all these, all these different things of why I couldn't do something. I had all these reasons why I couldn't do something. Here's the reality of the situation. I just didn't want it bad enough. And what I mean by this is, I didn't really desire to have a job or to get off drugs. I was like, yeah, I wanna get off the street. I didn't like, I didn't like the things that my, my drug use was causing me to experience, but I didn't really have the inherent desire in my heart to stop doing it. I wanted the things that were happening because of it to stop. And I see the same thing with people who are looking to get sales online, especially their first sales. They don't really wanna get sales online. They don't really want to grow some kind of business. It's just that the pain that they're currently in with their current life, maybe their financial circumstances, they don't want that. And so they think, they look at, oh, I'll start an online business as an escape from the pain of their current situation. And while that may be true, the real thing here is, until you actually want to do this thing, until you have the desire of, of starting a business and, and running it and having it be successful, because that's what you want to do, not because of not because of the things that that will get you. Well, it's going to be very hard to stay consistent. It's going to be very hard to stay consistent. And so I'm going to share this framework that's been really helpful for me to make big changes like this. And before I share the framework, there's a couple of things that we need to truly understand when I say that it's your fault, right? Everything in my life is my fault. So here's what I mean. Would it be reasonable to suggest that everything in my life right now, the cat that I just showed you earlier, the house that I live in right now, the hoodie that I'm wearing, the clothes that are on my back, the stuff that's in my closet, that all of that stuff is in my life because of decisions that I've made in the past? Is it reasonable to suggest that? Okay. And so... I would say yes, right? And so if it's reasonable to suggest that everything that I have in my life right now is because of decisions that I've made in the past, would it also be reasonable to suggest that everything that I don't have in my life right now is also because of decisions that I've made in the past? So if the answer to that is yes, and to me it is, then that's why 
everything that I have and that I don't have is nobody's fault but my own. It's not the course that I bought that I didn't get results with after I tried for two months and then I stopped, no matter what the mentor was doing. It's like the key thing in there is I stopped. So it's like, no shit, you didn't get the results, right? Um, it's not uh, my dad's fault for not being supportive. And the way that you could really see how these things that we blame aren't our fault is, it's like, oh yeah, dad wasn't supportive on the of the online business thing because he wanted me to go get a traditional job. It's like, well, I could say that that's the reason I'm not successful, but um, let me ask myself real quick. Is there somebody else? Is there anyone else in the world who grew a successful business with an unsupportive dad? Is there anybody else who had a dad that's like, I don't think you should do this business thing. And then they did it anyway and they were successful. If the answer is yes. And that's not the reason. That's just the reason that I tell myself I'm not successful. I brought up desires just a couple minutes ago because when you truly have a desire in your heart to make this thing work whatever it is that you're trying to do then all of those other reasons they're they're just excuses and you can see them as that because it's like well i don't care what my dad thinks about this i want to do this and guess what you know what's funny i had to adopt this mentality to get sober off drugs and alcohol three and a half years ago and um and before that, though, I really had the desire to do drugs and alcohol. And I, and, and I did that regardless of what anybody else thought, regardless of what life threw my way. I did it anyways. And I got the consequences of that over time. That's why I was like on the street and all that stuff. But I still continued to do it. And, and the key thing here is whatever we truly desire, we have a true desire in our heart for something and we are willing to take action towards it consistently for an undetermined amount of time, we will experience the thing we desire, period. And so when you think about that, who's the one person who is in complete control of the actions that you take? There's only one person in the world who is in control of the actions that you get to take. It's just one. And that's you. So you are in control of the decisions that you make, of the actions that you take, and how long you decide to take them for you. So here's the framework that I use to ensure that I am continually taking proper action to where I want to go. I did this for getting sober. I did this for uh, learning how to close deals, make offers. The skills that you see me with right now, being on video, making YouTube videos, getting on sales calls, DMing people, getting sales, closing sales, coaching people, mentoring people, helping them do the exact same thing. These are all different skills that I've learned and this framework helped me identify which skills I needed to learn and, and pushed me to continue taking action to actually get good at those things. This framework will help you take action towards improving your relationship, towards uh, getting in shape, whatever it is that you're looking to do, whatever transformation that you're looking to make. Number one is identify the goal. We can't take action and move towards something if we don't even know what it is. I like to think about it like this. Let's say that your goal is a destination. Let's say that you go to the airport and you decide that you want to uh, take a trip somewhere. And so you go to the airport, nobody does this anymore. Everybody just buys their tickets online. But let's say that you go to the airport and you're talking to, uh, you're talking to somebody at the desk there, right? And you're trying to buy a ticket. You say, hey, I wanna go on vacation. So you live in LA and you're at LAX International Airport you go to that airport and you say, hey, I want to take a vacation. What's the first question that they're going to ask you? Where do you want to go? And if you're like, uh, I don't know, just somewhere, anywhere, not here. They can't even really sell you a ticket. They're like, you have to know where you want to go to get on a plane. 
So this is why we have to identify the goal first. And I, this sounds kind of crazy that I have to say this, but there's so many people that just take blind action because all they know is that they don't want to be in LA anymore. But you have, and so they're like, let me just take action to try to get out of LA, change the current circumstance, change the pain that I'm in right now. And they just take blind action all over the place sporadically and then wonder why they don't really get anywhere. We have to know where we're trying to go. So if you say that you want to improve your relationship with your spouse or with your partner, how so? What do you want the relationship to actually look like? Map it out. Like actually have a detailed picture of what you want it to look like in your mind. If you want to grow your business, have a detailed picture of what you want the business to look like and your day-to-day -day involvement in it. I had to do this because I wanted to grow my business and, and I started growing it and I realized that I was growing it in a way that I didn't really want to. I was growing it in a way where I was working like 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, almost every day. And that's not really what I wanted. And so I shifted it and changed it because I realized this doesn't align with my goal. And now I've been able to map my business out so it takes way less time out of my week. And yeah, I make less money doing it, but I feel more fulfilled because it's actually what I want. So we have to map out what it is that we want. Step two of the framework, identify the skills and the character traits that you need to adopt to be able to get there. So the difference between getting to your goal and just flying somewhere, like the story that I told earlier about buying a ticket at an airport, you go to an airport and you tell them where you want to go and then you just pay them. And then you show up, you get on the plane, the pilot takes you there, you get there. The difference in life with transformations and with goals is you are your own pilot. So if you don't know how to fly the plane, guess what? You got to acquire the skill that teaches you how to do that. And you have to become the person who is patient and who is willing to take action consistently to acquire those skills. Let's say that you want a better relationship with your spouse and you don't want to get into arguments anymore and you want to be able to communicate effectively and in a loving way. Well, guess what? You have to improve your own communication skills. You have to improve yourself and learn how to get better at communication. You have to learn patience. You have, there's a, a lot of different skills that you have to learn and you have to learn those through action. We don't just gain skills by thinking about them or reading about them. Reading or in, absorbing information gives us an intellectual understanding. It does not give us a skill. It's on you to develop the skills. Step three is reminding ourselves on a daily basis of the destination we are going to reminding ourselves on a daily basis of the destination we're going to and the person that we are becoming in the process. And this is really important because if we don't remind ourselves, a lot of times we will end up, we will end up taking action in different directions that, that don't really get us anywhere. And so we have to constantly remind ourselves of the destination that we're flying to this way we can consistently ask ourselves throughout the day, does, is, does this decision, every time we're confronted with a decision, we can say, does this decision move me closer towards my goal or further away from it? Because nothing's going to get you there on its own. Like this one decision is going to get me there 100%. But every decision will move you either closer to or further away from it. Like me deciding to make this video today moves me closer towards my goal of being able to help a lot of people understand mindset, be able to change their life, transform themselves, get sales online. That's, that's one of my goals is to be able to help a lot of people do that uh, throughout my life. And me deciding to not make this video because of whatever reason is moving me further away from that. And so I decide to take the action, make the decision that moves me closer towards it. And I can't remember to ask myself this if I'm not reminding myself of what my goal is. That's the framework. So number one, identify the goal. Identify exactly what it is that you're looking to do. Number two, identify the skills and the character traits that you need to develop to get there. And number three, 
consistently remind yourself every day of the goal that you are looking to achieve and the direction that you're looking to go. Of course, there's things like mentorship, courses, all of that stuff helps, but at the end of the day, it is still on you. It's still on you. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next one.